Oh yeah. It's a big one. I mean, freaking stud. Oh my god, stay down. No, 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 no. Hey, baby. Oh. <sighs> Holy panic attack. Boys. <laughs> Oh, hey guys welcome back to your lake for guide welcome back to the guides network gonna do a little in-depth instruction on one of my favorite fall techniques but uh we don't think about that right there huh you like you some of that huh well i'm a fan i'm a fan of the goat lake so I'll, i'm a fan of cold drinks so i'm a fan of that right there we'll actually be putting those up for sale very soon on my website so be waiting for the announcement on those and if you'd like to order some they'll be available there but you know we've gotten to fall now we had about 857 inches of rain this week i'm pretty sure and uh it's time for that fall bite to get going that cold rain and that cold weather that came with it really kind of got things moving along in a big fast hurry and it's starting to happen fast we're still on the front edge of it but it's getting there real quick one of my favorite things to do when we get to the fall time of year is to pull out the biggest piece of metal i can find make sure it's got a treble hook on it and catch some big old bass six-cent spoon holy cow oh my goodness the big six-cent splutter spoon today my 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 holy cow we gotta put this one on scale for y'all that's a whew, might be a nine it's an eight for sure probably a nine that is a big big fish there it is locked it in whew. nine pounds and three ounces that come giant right there boys that's why you throw them big old flutter spoons out here on lake fork in the fall ladies and gentlemen right freaking there Woo! all right boys and girls around the world let's let this big girl go back to her home see if i can do this without breaking anything or Yep, that net pole just kicked my rod in with my flutter spoon attached to it. Yeah, that happened just now. That really sucks, really bad. But even that can't get me down when uh, what just happened just happened. So nine pounder, awesome day. There you go, girl. There she goes. sixcentsfishing.com be sure to punch that code in if you're a lake fork guy get a 10 percent discount on some rods that you can find in the bottom of lake fork and some really cool flutter spoons
All right, fall. And today we're talking about offshore fall fishing with big flutter spin. Um, it is, it was invented right here on Lake Fork. It's near and dear to my heart. A good friend of mine actually invented this technique, uh, got it started. That being said, there's been a lot of new takes on it. Some good, some not so much. Uh, so today we're going to kind of cover the gamut of spoon fishing in the fall, top to bottom, all the different species you can catch, all the different sizes of fish that you can catch, and just kind of go over everything that you need to know. First thing you need to know is where to find these fish that are going to want to bite a, a spoon when you get to the fall time of year that we're at now. Uh, for me, the one thing that kind of stands out is it seems to be really narrow peaking structures. Uh, imagine a road bed that has a good rise on each side. You got that long narrow road. Road beds are phenomenal in the fall. We have some really good road beds uh, out here on Fork. A lot of them around the bridges, a lot of them not around the bridges, just kind of out there in the middle. But if you look on a map, you can find a lot of road beds. Go out there and do your homework. Find the ones that have a good rise on each side, have that kind of long, narrow peak at the top. Uh, those are A number one typical spots for this flutter spoon technique in the fall. Also, you can find, if you look hard enough, you can find some long pond nams or points that have that long, narrow top on them. Uh, as far as depth goes, you're going to want that to top out. You're going to want the peak of the structure in about 15 to 20 feet. You know, this week, it's been kind of 17 to 19. Uh, sometimes, though, it ranges. Anywhere between 15 and 20 is usually a pretty good safe bet. That's where they're going to be. Also, guys, one thing to keep in mind, the deeper water, the deeper the water is that is close to these structures, the more likely they're going to be to hold big numbers of big bass. So if you can find one that has say a long point that has a creek channel swinging in next to it or a road bed that has a creek that went under it maybe there's an old bridge and it drops off real deep into that creek uh, any type of super deep water source that correlates with these long narrow structures is going to juice them up that much more so one of the things that you'll notice when you get out here there's all kinds of species mixed up out here on this structure in the fall you can have yellow bass you can have crappie catfish sand bass largemouth i mean just everything that swims in lake fort kind of gets all mixed up this time of year it's a little bit of a unique deal to the fall where all the species blend together like that. Uh, one thing that I always like to do when I get out on these structures and I've marked a, you know, a bunch of fish on my graph or something like that, and I'm not real sure what kind of species they may or may not be, is I want to go for a jig and spoon. This right here is a jig and spoon made by Mr. Joe Spates. This is a one ounce. I use both the one ounce and half ounce sizes from Joe Spates on his slab spoons. And man, th this is my favorite color. It's got a little chartreuse on one side, got a little silver on the other. You know, one thing about it, guys, in the fall, uh, these big bass, these large bass, like you'll see some of today coming up, they really key in on these yellow bass or barfish that are about the size of your hand, but the big deal is they got a little bit of a yellow tint to them. So I throw a lot of stuff that has a chartreuse or yellow coloring or flash to it. Now I'll throw this jigging spoon out there and I'll kind of hop it around. You know, the jigging spoon is real simple to fish. It's so simple. I can make a little short cast and show you right here while I'm sitting down. But jig and spoon is a real simple fish. You just make your little cast out there to where you've marked your fish on your electronics. And you're just going to let that line kind of free spool. See my line just free spooling off there? I don't know if y'all can see it or not. Yep, it hit the bottom. So you just let it free spool until it hits the bottom. Now, once that bait is down there, all I'm going to do is take and just little short hops. Let it fall. Short hops, let it fall. Short hops, let it fall. If for whatever reason some fish swim under your trolling motor unit and you can see fish on your graph, this is the best tool to drop straight vertical and just hop it up and down and let it fall down. Hop it up, let it fall. Pop, pop, let it fall. So, real simple technique. When they bite it, you'll feel them thump it, man. Just reel into them. You know, don't jerk real hard. Just kind of reel into them to set the hook. And, uh, yeah, pretty simple. And, you know, while I'm doing that, the number one species that I want to see uh, more than any other is that yellow bass because those big bass do key on those. Here's what one of those look like. And now you can see why we start to really like this flutter spoon. This is even a brand new one I just got from Joe. This one's in gold. I've always fished the silver base spoon with the painted finish. This is a gold base spoon with the painted finish, which I really kind of dig as well. So this is one that I throw a bunch. This is the original flutter spoon from the original inventor Joe Spates. By the way, you can purchase those at smashtechbaits.com, which is linked below. That's the only place you can find them online. The original Big Joe Flutter Spoon is at smashtechbaits.com. Now, there's one other spoon that I'm a big, big fan of. Uh, it's a bigger spoon. It's one that I throw when I just want one bite. You know, if I go out there and I see a bunch of life, 
but the majority of it is yellow bass or something else some of the smaller fish that the big bass are targeting and there's just a few really big arcs the spoon that i'm going to reach for is the big six cents fishing spoon uh, that's linked below at sixcentsfishing.com if you do want to purchase those be sure you punch in the code your lake fort guy get a 10 percent discount on all orders now i only had one left i have to get all my six cent stuff shipped into me i only have one left and as you'll see, we had a little bit of a train wreck on it today, but you'll get to get a look at the spoon. You'll get to get a look at the kind of fish it catches. Uh, and then you'll get to see me being the uh, bumbling idiot that I tend to be most of the time. Let's let this big girl go back to her home. See if I can do this without breaking anything or... Yep, that net pole just kicked my rod in with my flutter spoon attached to it. Yeah, that happened. <sighs> that really sucks, really bad. <laughs> Special fish, man. Spe really cool fish. I literally just caught that a couple hours ago, but my rod is somewhere over that way i don't know rod be gone uh if you come out here and you find a six inch fishing rod with a dial fuego reel with a big old six inch spoon on it if you happen to crank that up with your crankbait or something i'll let you boy if you don't mind as far as actual rod reel and line setup that i'm using using my six inch series lux rods love those rods uh, you also get 10 percent discount on the rods on that website when you punch in that code you're like for god as well but the uh, rod that i'm using for the big joe flutter spoon is the or most 90% of my flutter spoons I use is the 7.5 Heavy with a moderate action. I want some tip in that rod, and we'll explain that to you here in just a little bit. But 7.5 Heavy, moderate action rod. I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, you could get away with 15, you probably get away with 12. You're not gonna put a lot of pressure on these fish when you're throwing this big chunk of metal, believe it or not. Again, it's a heavy action rod, but it has a lot of tip to it. A lot of bend in that tip to really be a good shock absorber when I'm fishing that really big spoon and I don't want that fish to come up and I need all the play I can get to help keep that big piece of metal buttoned to his head. All my reels on my spoons, I actually like to use high speed reels, seven, three to one. Here's the reason. I, I very rarely do I move the actual spoon with my reel handle. And I'll show you all these retrieves in a minute, but I'm usually moving the spoon with the rod tip and then just picking up slack with the reel handle. A lot of times when they hit this thing, they'll hit it and knock slack in it it's important to have a high-speed gear ratio reel to pick up all that slack. And the only time that I do move it with the reel handle, I'm actually swimming it off the bottom as fast as I possibly can. So again, the high-speed ratio reel really comes in handy. Let's get up and see if we can't show you guys some retrieve ticks. Ticks. Some retrieve tricks to help you catch more fat. Some retrieve tricks to help you catch more bass on big flutter spoons. So we'll just kind of lob her out there. And then immediately I'm going to start stripping line. My bail is open and I'm free spooling to the bottom. Every time that thing flutters down and picks up slack, I'm going to strip some more slack off of it and throw it out just like that. You can strip it by hand if you'd rather do that. Now, in all honesty, there's no wrong way. Once that flutter spoon is on the bottom, big deal, guys, is when it's falling, make sure it's falling on slack line. That's very important. It will not have the same and correct action if you don't let it fall on slack line. So, there's really no wrong way to fish it. You can just kind of raise it up a little bit and let it fall. You can just do little hops. There's no wrong way to do it, honestly. One of my favorite is to lazily swim it up and then let it fall. And what I'll do is I'll point my rod down, reel up all my slack, get my line tight, I'll raise my rod up, and then let it fall. And I'll just follow my slack down, making sure that spoon is always falling on slack line. Back on the bottom, reel all my slack up, pick it up, let it fall on slack right here. Now, you'll notice when I catch some of these fish that these aren't big bio hook sets. I want to pull on them, but I don't really want to jerk on them. Uh, that's a lot of metal. I really want to make sure I kind of feed that spoon to them, kind of ease that hook into them. Now, once I start getting it into them, I really want to dig it in, as you'll see. But you don't want to have a sudden snap, man. That's a big piece of metal that can blow their mouth open. If you do hook them, you're going to skin hook them and then you're going to lose them. It's important to get that hook in there as good as possible because with that big piece of metal, they have a ton of leverage to throw that bait when they get to the surface. There we go. There we go. There we go. 
that being said once i've got a fish hooked up and i pulled on him right and i got him good i've dug that reel head land now at this point i'm going to stop reeling and i'm only going to pick up slack as that fish comes to me i literally want that fish and i'll even push my button and feed the fish slack at times but i want that fish to swim down if you don't pull on him most of the time he will stay down and try to go away from you uh, and that's exactly what you want usually fishing wide open areas with no timber around so you just want that fish to swim as far away from you as you can main thing is you don't want him coming up jumping and shaking because like we said a lot of weight on those pieces of metal and uh, a lot of leverage for that fish to throw that treble hook if you take your time and let that fish swim till he's tired usually he will just come up and kind of lay on the side for you and not really fight you too much when you get to All right, guys that's going to wrap it up for us check out those links below smashtechbaits.com for the big joe flutter spoon um, sixcentsfishing.com for their big flutter spoon along with the rods that we're using as well be sure you punch in that code your lake fork guide for the 10 percent discount on all orders there hey man thank you guys for watching it's an exciting time to be at the lake the bites you know getting good and it's going to keep getting better so uh man stay following the channel there's going to be some big fish caught over the next few months i guarantee you that there's already one big one caught today as y'all saw but uh good times man if you guys are interested in a november trip i do have some november dates open left scattered starting around mid-november or so so give me a shot if you're interested in one of those and we'll see you guys next time right here on your lake fork guide oh yeah that was a big one oh, i mean freaking stud oh my god stay down no 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 holy panic attack boys <laughs> that's what lake fork's all about ladies <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I meant to say, my goodness.